Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Oh, good man. One who eats meat kills the seed of great compassion. Please keep watching to find out more. Talofa, virtuous viewers. Talofa translates as "hello" in the Samoan language. I am Susan. The kind-hearted Samoan people pray that your virtuous actions uplift you in God's love and grace. The fundamental teachings of all spiritual masters and religious scriptures guide us toward the realization of our higher self or oneness with God. These teachings also say that such an attainment can only be achieved if we have compassion and loving kindness towards all of God's creations, having mercy for our animal co-inhabitants. Means abstention from meat eating. This way of life is also known as ahimsa or non-violence, and it includes adopting a plant-based diet as the basis for nurturing the seed of care in the hearts of all humankind. During the world premiere of *The Real Love*, the musical in California, USA. Supreme Master Ching Hai shared deep insights into the detrimental impact of meat eating to the consciousness and spiritual level of humans. You see, eating animal flesh, meaning we are decreasing our love in our being from our structure, holy structure. We are born from God. We were holy. We were true human. We were true children of God. But if we eat the animals, then the mixing of blood type and genetic code between human and animals make us lose our status as the crowd of creation. As pure humans, the children of God, we are under direct connection with the light. With the mighty master power of the commanding center of the universe, we have absolute command over all under heaven, because we were pure and were children of God. But as we keep putting different elements into our beings, even physically, it will affect our spiritual structure as well. Because we became mixing, mixing, a mixing structure, not pure. We became hybrid, vulnerable to attack from the dark force, because we are not pure anymore. Thus, this kind of mixing creature could be annihilated, because this mixing creature sends very confusing. Energy, confusing message into the center of the universe, is not recognized as pure human. So we could be eliminated out of the physical realm to be recycled, to be screened out for pureness again, and to be reused. But this process can be very painful and torturous over long periods. Could be hundreds of thousands of Earth years.
In this wise reminder to reclaim our original noble purity through a diet that is animal free. The words of Supreme Master Ching Hai also resonate with spiritual teachings throughout the ages. Veganism is openly mentioned in scriptures from Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, Jainism, Judaism, and many other religions. Thankfully, a growing number of people today are adopting the loving-kindness, vegan way of living as they gain a deeper spiritual understanding about the cruelty and karmic implication of eating animals. In celebration of World Meat Our Day, we wish to share with you selected scriptures that highlight the disastrous effect of meat eating on our consciousness and well-being. It is thus easy to imagine the paradise we all can share once we turn to only plant-based fare. The key elements of Buddhism are kindness, humanity, and equality. As the worshipped Shakyamuni Buddha said, all beings can become Buddhas, for all have the Buddha nature, and all will finally become enlightened. The plant-based diet, as adopted by Buddhists, is a form of nourishing one's compassionate heart and practicing loving-kindness to all beings as well as upholding the spirit of equality. All beings are equal. Lord Buddha also said, Life is dear to all beings. They have the right to live the same as we do. As such, according to the law of karma, retribution, we should refrain from harming or killing any beings, be it direct or indirect, if we do not wish to be harmed or killed by others. As mentioned in the Maha Simhanada Sutra, or the Sutra of the Great Lion's Roar, keeping the Bodhisattva's precepts include not partaking in food that is prepared with animal flesh. This prohibition on meat is known as the Pasa Shilabrata and is considered a practical rule for getting rid of the evil of wrath. Lord Buddha also specified five precepts as basic rules of conduct. The first precept is no killing, which includes indirect killing. This would be if you consume the flesh of an animal that you did not slaughter yourself but someone else did. So, no killing means to abstain from eating meat. In the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra, Venerated Mahakashapa said to Lord Buddha that he viewed a great virtue in not eating meat. Lord Buddha replied, well said, well said. You now come to know my mind well. A bodhisattva who protects dharma should be those. Oh good man, from now on, I do not permit my Sravaka disciples to eat meat. When receiving from a dhanapati a pristine dana gift of faith, think that one is eating the place of one's own son. Lord Buddha also said, Oh good man, one who eats meat kills the seed of great compassion. When one eats meat, this gives out the smell of meat while one is walking, standing, sitting, or reclining. People smell this and become fearful. This is as when one comes near a lion. One sees and smells the lion and fear arises. Oh good man, when one eats garlic, the dirty smell is unbearable. Other people notice it. They smell the bad smell. They leave that person and go away. Even from far off, people hate to see such a person. 
they will not come near him. It is the same with one who eats meat. It is a similar situation with all people who, on smelling the meat, become afraid and entertain the thought of death. All living things in the water, on land, and in the sky desert such a person and run away. They say that this person is their enemy. In the Dhammapatta, similarly, it is stated that all beings fear death, and one should not take the life of any being. All tremble at violence, all fear death. Putting oneself in the place of another, one should not kill, nor cause another to kill. The Dhammapatta also explains that killing any living being is an obstacle to spiritual development. One is not called noble who harms living beings. One who does not harm living beings is called noble. Lord Jesus spoke only of love, compassion, and mercy to all beings, including, of course, our beloved animal co-inhabitants. Christian scriptures, in fact, advocate the plant-based diet, as in Genesis 1.29, when God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing tree, in which the fruit of the tree yielding seed it unto you shall be for meat. Major prophets also condemn eating meat, as reflected in the later books of the Bible. According to the Gospel of the Epionites, Lord Jesus Christ even rejected the Passover meal. Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? To which he replied, I have no desire to eat the flesh of this Paschal lamb with you. So it is definitely believable that the gentle, kind, loving, and merciful Lord Jesus Christ would never partake of meat, as described in the following passages from the Holy Bible. We humankind shall adopt a plant-based diet. Our beloved animal co-inhabitants shall also partake of plants for food. In this world of compassionate regard for all beings, love and peace will prevail, and we will have Eden on earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them, the cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
our great appreciation, intuitive viewers, for joining us on today's Words of Wisdom. Please join us again tomorrow for part two of this program. Coming up next is Whatever Belongs to Caesar Must Be Returned to Caesar, part two of five, right after Noteworthy News. With heaven's grace, may we create a vegan world very soon for the peace of all beings. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com barre oblique WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barre inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barre inclinada WOW. Rancangan kami menawarkan banyak bahasa. Sila kunjungi suprememastertv.com slash kehadapan schedule dan suprememastertv.com slash kehadapan WOW.